Welcome back to Cloning with the Crew Part 2. Joining me is the OG Daddy Kane with us today. How you doing, Daddy Kane? Hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. Glad to be back. All right, man. So how are you liking the Cosmic Fog Milk and Honey Version 1? Um, well, when I first tasted it, you know, I was getting a, uh, a really weird maple note and uh, really wasn't caring for that too much. Uh, but like I said, I let it sit for a couple of days and, you know, for some reason that, that note just kind of disappeared for me and it went somewhere else. And so it was a little bit more enjoyable after that. Okay, cool, man. So, like, the first recipe that we released, the version 1, the V1 of um, Cosmic Fog's Milk and Honey, we did, to go over the recipe, we did use Flavor West Banana at 0.15%. Um, we did use Capella Cereal 27 at 3%. Uh, Loran's Cream Cheese Icing at 1%. One-on-one -on -one Creamy Milk Undertone at 1%. Um, TPA Graham Cracker Clear at 0.75%, TPA Marshmallow at 0.2%, TPA Peanut Butter at 0.25%, and to finish up the recipe to keep it with the commercial e-liquid, we did use 0.25% of Super Sweet. Now there were different flavors that we did use, um, you know, to try to get this recipe right. We did tweak it a little bit. We went up on some percentages. We went down on some percentages. Let's talk a little bit about some of the flavors that we did try to use that didn't seem to quite fit in this recipe. Um, what are what are some of those ones that we did use? Um, I know we used uh, with the banana cream from, um, who was that? Lorenz. Lorenz. And, uh, I don't know, it just... I don't know, it just didn't really fit in well with, with that profile. I felt, you know what, I did feel the same way about Lorraine's banana cream. It did seem kind of, um, it came through a little bit too much. Um, you know, we I tried that. We tried the, I think, TPA banana cream. That also, I mean, that seemed to work a little bit, but um, I felt that Flavor West was a little bit better um, working in there. Now, we did try uh, breakfast cereals by Flavor Art. Mm. We tried Flavor West Crunchy cereal. That might work. Yeah. Um, we did. I, I, I actually, I actually like that a little bit. Did you? Uh, that, okay. That one version. So. Cool, man. Uh, Capella's banana. We tried that. That was a little bit too strong. Um, Crunchy cereal TFA. We tried sweet cereal flakes TFA. Okay. Um, a lot of different flavors that we did throw in there. Now I did try to go the flavor art. Uh, Vienna cream, fresh cream route in place of the creamy milk undertones, but did want to try to consolidate the recipe a little bit more, so I felt that the one-on-one -on -one creamy milk undertones worked the best, uh, coupled with the Loran's cream cheese icing. I think that really gave us our milk base that we needed for the recipe. Mm. Um, now, after tweaking the recipe, how did you feel about the TPA graham cracker clear in there? Because there are a few different graham crackers that we did try. We did try Flavor West, and we did try um, Capella's. But how did you feel about the TPA graham cracker clear in the initial recipe? Well, my thoughts on the TFA graham cracker clear were, um, you know, it, it seemed like it was just missing the cinnamon note or the spice note that we were looking for. Um, it seemed like that original, the original Cosmic Fog had a spicy note to it. It, it was very subtle. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Um, I same thing. Like the TPA graham cracker clear to me. I mean, it was on point. Um, you did get that graham cracker flavor in there, but it seemed to be missing something. So we did try to go the route of Flavor West graham cracker. Now I did put that in there, and Daddy Kane also put that in there, and it seemed like the graham cracker was there, but it was still missing something. It was a little bit drier in the um, yeah. in the mix. Um, so, with that being said, I was thinking and thinking and thinking, and then we decided to come up with using, trying using uh, Capella's graham cracker, and that seemed to work pretty well in the second version that we're going to be doing today. Um, so, let's talk a little bit about the recipe that we're going to be doing today. I'm actually going to go through some of the flavors that we did use in the second version, and we feel that it is pretty close, and you guys will enjoy it. All right, guys, in the second version, we did keep Flavor West Banana. Cereal 27, we also kept that one. 
the ranch cream cheese icing we kept that one as well creamy milk undertones now here comes the capella graham cracker we did sub this out for the tpa graham cracker clear now the reason being is that this is a little bit heavier it does have a stronger graham cracker flavor in my opinion and it also brings that spice to the table that we were missing from the original we kept in the tpa marshmallow now we did try to sub out with flavor west marshmallow but it really didn't make a difference so we decided to keep uh, the tpa marshmallow <laughs> Um, TPA, TPA peanut butter. Now we did use this. Um, you can. We also tried TFA DX peanut butter. Now I felt and Daddy Kane felt that these two were kind of interchangeable in the mix. So if you don't have TFA peanut butter, you can use DX peanut butter. And to finish it off, we did use Capella's Super Sweet. We kept that at a quarter of a percent because we felt that was uh, right where it needed to be. All right, guys, in this second version, we did kind of keep the recipe the same. We did tweak some of the percentages in the recipe. We did sub out some of the flavors. But now in this second one, we did keep Flavor West Banana at 0.15%. Now, the original does have that slight banana taste to it. Um, I was thinking about taking the banana out, but how do you feel about keeping it in there, Daddy Kane? Um, I actually liked it because um, it's kind of off the initial smell on the bottle. You kind of get that hint of the banana in there. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm actually kind of digging it. Um, it may be falling off a little bit now. It's been, I've, you know, I've had this bottle sneaking for a couple of days. Uh, okay. But, but I'm still getting that. I'm still getting that hint of the banana in there. Yeah, man. Like those other bananas didn't seem to work. I felt that uh, Flavor West banana was. Um, pretty good it sat really well it layered really well in the recipe now the capella cereal seven we did try other cereals like crunchy cereal breakfast cereal uh sweet cereal flakes from tfa um and we decided to settle on staying with uh cereal 27 and mm. we did keep it at three percent in the mix now you did mention something about using a different cereal um, yeah i kind of i kind of like the crunchy stuff flavor west crunchy cereal okay um, it had a, it had a little. It's, it's got the same general, um, toasted feeling to it. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, but to me, it had a little bit of sweetness on the backside, um, which added to the mix, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, I did. What was the other cereal? There was one of them. It was TFA. Cereal Crunch, not Crunch, crunch. Berry, the Cereal crunch. crunch. I did actually sub that out with um, Capella 27, and it was pretty mm. close. Um, it did have that almost cardboard taste that you get um, on the, the TFA Cereal Crunch, and it, um, but we decided to, at the end of the day that Capella Cereal 27 um, got the job done. Mm. Um, Loran's Cream Cheese Icing at 1%, we kept that at the same because we felt that that was a pretty decent percentage for the milk base in this version 2 okay now one-on-one -on -one cream milk undertone now I was thinking about maybe playing around with it I did raise it up a half a percent in uh, a couple of the other versions that we did but it did seem like that the Raising it up a quarter of a percent or even to 0.75 percent really didn't make much of a difference in the overall recipe. So we decided to keep the creamy milk undertones at a 0.25 percent in the mix. Now I'm making up a 30 mil today because actually this second version, man, is pretty close. Yep, she's pretty good, man. All right, now off to the graham cracker. Like I said, we did try um, subbing out the original TPA graham cracker clear. We did try Flavor West graham cracker. It just wasn't hitting that spot that we needed. It was just um, too dull, too dry. Um, wasn't really bringing anything to the table. So we did reach for the Capella graham cracker, and this surprised us. Um, it actually did bring that spicy cinnamon subtle note that you get from the original milk and honey what would you say about that man did you feel it made a difference in there yeah i did it, it it definitely brought that note to the table that we were looking for 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I think it, it it had its place in this recipe. It really did. Yeah, I mean, I like I did try to like in the initial recipe we did use the um, graham cracker clear clear at at point seven five percent, and then the. I tried to sub it like maybe a half a percent because this is a little bit more stronger than the TPA graham cracker that wasn't doing it. So um, in turn, I did just sub it one to one, man, 0.75 percent, and it seemed to do the trick in the recipe. Now mm-hmm. off to the marshmallow. Uh, I did try Flavor West marshmallow to see if that would make a difference. I felt that the marshmallow wasn't as dominant um, in version one. Like I said, in version one. It seemed like that marshmallow wasn't sitting right in the recipe, so right. I did sub it out with Flavor West marshmallow to see if that would make a difference. Now it did hide a little bit in there, but um, it seemed to get lost totally um, on like a one day or two day steep in the mix. Um, so I went back to the TFA marshmallow and at the 0.2 percent, and that seemed to sit pretty decent in the mix. I agree. So, all right, so the peanut butter, off to the peanut butter. You said you like the DX peanut butter. Yeah, that. I, I kind of prefer the DX peanut butter over the regular peanut butter uh, okay. for some odd reason. Um, it just it just had a richer, nuttier, layered flavor to me for some reason. Um, so the version that I mixed, I actually did mix it with the DX. And the other version... They were sitting kind of, kind of hand in hand, you know. So you could have gone either way, you know. Um, I just, I just didn't really taste any huge difference between the two, um, outside of a little, a little bit of richness factor, you know. Yeah, me too, man. I mean, I felt the same way. Um, I think they're pretty much interchangeable. I do feel that maybe the TPA peanut butter brings a little bit more honey to the table. Than the the DX the DX has more of a peanut bolder peanut flavor mm. but um, either one I think that it, it'll work in the mix now we're just gonna top this off with some PG and VG and we're gonna give it a rip to see how it compares all right Daddy Kane final thoughts on this version two that we got what are you oh, thinking oh. man overall um, I like it. I like it all the way around. Um, like I said before, I think it's really, really, really close to the original. Um, some very minor nuances. I mean, when I say minor, I mean really minor. I mean, I mean almost standalone. You could probably pass this off for the phone or for the original. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. I think it is pretty good. Um, I'm gonna actually give it a taste. It's been a couple days since I actually vaped this recipe in general because. My palate was getting fatigued um, on this recipe, and I was starting to lose some of the um, real small profiles in there. So I had to let my palate reset a little bit. Um, I do have the original on this RDA. Now, keep in mind, I do vape at a 0.3, 4.2 volts, 60 watts. I uh, use a dead rabbit. Nothing special on my setup. So what do you think, though, as far as, like, do you think it needs anything, like a little bit more tweaking? I think we can tweak it just a little bit more, but I think we're at the point where it is um, pretty spot on. I really can't tell the difference. I'm get, I can't tell the difference. I mean, I'm, I'm really getting, I'm getting the peanut butter, the banana on the back end. I get the creamy, milky undertone on the back. Yeah. Um, I get the... Uh, the, you know the honey caramelly flavor up front. Um, it's just it's it just follows through very well. I, I like it. Yeah, man. Now that I let my palate reset a little bit, man, I am super surprised. Uh, I think this is like this is good, man. It I think this came out really well. Um, just by subbing out a few ingredients, I'm taking out the TPA graham cracker clear, putting in the Capella's graham cracker. Um, Bump. I think we bumped something else up. Oh no, we kept the same marshmallow. We did bump up the peanut butter. Uh, uh, I think it was a quarter of a percent or, or half. Point two five. Did yeah. we go? No, we actually bumped it up a half a percent. I did bump it well, up. Well, 
point seven five. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you're right. Yeah, I'm point sorry. seven five. So basically, the recipe stayed the same from the version one. We subbed out the graham cracker and we bumped up the peanut butter a half a percent. Um, other than that, overall, I think this recipe is a winner. We're going to release this as almost the final. I think maybe there might be a little bit more tweaking that we can do, but it's very, very minute. Um, what do you have to say about that, man? Uh, I'm right along with you on that one. Cool, man. Other than that, do you have anything else you want to say before we get out of here today? Yep. Hey, it was glad being back. Uh, hope to you know do some more of these with you there, David. And uh, hey, kudos, peace. Cool beans, man. So I hope you guys enjoy this version 2 release of Cosmic Fog Milk and Honey. Um, I do think our next e-liquid that we are going to be doing is Killer Custard. That's going to be a good one. I'm a custard fanatic, so I think that one should be a pretty easy profile for me to do. Um, other than that, guys, I think that's all for today. Remember to create, inspire, and learn. Till next time, thanks for tuning in.